How's it going everyone? This is the Samsung CO2 and it's a small diaphragm pencil condenser microphone. A great option for indoors because it doesn't have the problem a lot of shotgun microphones have in uh, reverberant rooms. So this XLR microphone is one of the most affordable XLR microphones you can buy right now. And not only that, but it has very good reviews and some even refer to it as the hidden secret of the industry. But is it really all that good? Let's go ahead and find out in this video. So the Samsung CO2 is a great option if you're just starting out or for those who are on a tight budget who cannot afford a flagship microphones but still want a decent quality audio. And I think this will mostly apply to YouTubers. Um, speaking of audio, I have used it for the entire length of this video so that way you can hear it and make your own impression whether it's good enough or not. Just to be aware, I have applied a 15% denoise filter in Adobe Audition because the audio was rather noisy and distracting. But we'll talk more about the noise issue of the Samsung uh, later in the video. This microphone is also a potential option if you're traveling and you don't want to bring more expensive microphones because that way it won't be too big of an issue if you lose them or you break them. For example, I'd rather bring the Samsung CO2 uh, than bring my Sennheiser MKH416 or my Rode NTG3. So if I lose or break the Samsung CO2, it won't be that big of a deal. But really, how affordable is this microphone? Well, in the UK, uh, at the moment I'm recording this video, it's £79 on Amazon, and I think that's probably the best price right now. And that's not just for one of them, but it's for a set of two. If you don't want your microphone showing in the frame, but instead you want to have it boomed from above or anywhere else outside the frame, this is the mic for you. Also, I mentioned how this is very well suited for indoors, uh, because doing a good job at rejecting a lot of uh, room noise, reverb, and all that sort without any phase delay issues um, that usually shotgun microphones uh, have, especially in reverberant rooms. What I really appreciate about this mic is that they come with a hard box with padding inside and two shock mounts. Pricey alternatives like the NT5 only come with a pouch a mount clip and a pop filter. So Rode, maybe you should follow uh, Samsung and give people a proper box. Before I continue, I must say that I own uh, both uh, these microphones. So neither Samsung nor Rode has sent these microphones over, nor have they sponsored this video. I didn't actually intend it to buy the Samsung, but since I had no one I can borrow it from and renting it was a little bit pricey, uh, then I decided to buy it. And it made more sense. Renting it uh, for a few days was almost half the price of the set. So I was better off just buying it instead. So although they are made in China, they have a very good uh, build quality to them. They're fully metal and the capsule is detachable, but I don't know why it's detachable because I don't think there are any replacement uh, capsule for this. So the capsule of this microphone is super cardioid as represented by a symbol on the capsule, as you can see. Uh, even though in the description of the microphone it says it's cardioid. So it's actually uh, super cardioid like it is uh, shown on the capsule. The Samsung CO2 has a frequency response between 50 Hz to 20,000 Hz, has a sensitivity of minus 40 dB, a rated impedance of 200 ohms. So it has a mainly flat frequency response with a boost on the higher end, which is very similar to that of the Sennheiser MKH416. So given the price and what they come with, I think it's safe to say that uh, they're quite good value, but that's nothing if the audio quality is not good. So what you've been hearing now like I said, it's coming from the Samsung CO2, but how good it is, uh, that's something we're going to cover in a few moments. First, let me say that they're a bit uh, prone to plosives. Therefore, if you want to use them very close, you may want to use a better pop filter than the ones they come with because they don't do a very good job. Uh, they're also a little bit uh, sensitive to handling, so a good shock mount may be useful as well. And the last thing I'm going to complain about is that it has a little bit of a uh, self noise. So it's not as clean as a Rode NT5, um, definitely not as clean as the Sennheiser MKH50. But with a little bit of a noise reduction, you can actually make it work. Just make sure you don't apply too much of it uh, because that may uh, affect your audio. It will make it sound a bit unnatural. Also, you need to be aware if you're going to pair it with a recorder or interface that is not very good in terms of uh, noise. Uh, because that may uh, render the audio to be even noisier. Uh, I'm aware that those who will buy this microphone can afford uh, an Apollo interface or a Zoom F6, or perhaps a sound device Mix Pre 3. But a Zoom H4M Pro is all right, I suppose, with this microphone. 
So here is a moment of silence so you can hear the noise floor while I'm using it on the Zoom F6. So this is without any denoise filter applied to it. Okay, so now I'm going to provide you some samples from microphones which are a little bit more expensive than the Samsung CO2. So that way you can have uh, an idea how they compare against other microphones. And I'm going to start with the Rode NT5. So here is a sample coming from the Rode NT5 recorded on the Zoom H frame Pro to which I have not applied any EQ or compression. It's only been normalized to minus 23 LUFS. <clears throat> and here is a sample coming from the Sennheiser MKH50 uh, recorded on the Zoom H frame Pro. The same without any EQ or compression. I have only normalized it to minus 23 LUFS. And by the way, the Sennheiser MKH50 is a professional high-end microphone. So if you do videos where you don't show yourself in the video or you don't mind having it in the frame, then bringing it closer to your mouth will help with the noise because you can turn down your gain and the noise uh, won't be as noticeable. So my thoughts about this microphone are that, yes, this uh, microphone can be a good value if you're on a tight budget. Surprisingly, the audio quality is uh, actually quite good given how affordable um, uh, these microphones are. And I must say I'm a bit picky when it comes to buying a microphone. It needs to be better than good uh, before I buy it. But I would choose the Samsung CO2 for the audio quality, especially at this price point. Having said that, I'm not very keen on noisy microphones. So I would probably only buy this microphone if I couldn't afford anything uh, better. Now, the main reason I bought this microphone, like I said, is because it wouldn't make sense uh, renting it because uh, renting it uh, would have been a little bit too expensive. and I'm better off just buying it and then I can resell it if I need to and it will still cost me less than uh, renting it. And also I believe that it's a good option for traveling. So that's it for this video. Let me know uh, what you guys thought of it uh, down in the comments below. If you guys have any suggestions, uh, leave them in the comments uh, down below as well. Uh, also, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and that way you won't be missing any of my future videos. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care now.